Hello, good afternoon everybody, good morning or good evening for everybody wherever you are. Uh, we start our first uh, tutorial session of RoboCup 3D Soccer Simulation League. Uh, the, the first session we will, we will uh, run today was organized by Team Bahia Robotics Team uh, from Bahia State University in Brazil. Uh, I am Professor Marco Simões. I am the supervisor of this uh, team. And my students and me have prepared this tutorial for you about the complete setup of the simulator environment. The, the idea is to be a, a very introductory uh, tutorial so everybody can start from scratch. Uh, everyone who has no experience with uh, 3D simulation or even with robotic so soccer at all can uh, follow up these uh, tutorials and learn how you can start your own team. Uh, I will ask my students to present themselves. First, uh, Gabriel. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Gabriel Souza. I'm a student from the uh, Bahia State University. Uh, today, I'll be mainly uh, helping out uh, with the things here on the, on the live stream. But tomorrow, I'll be presenting how to uh, create, how to build and execute the the environment of the Soccer 3D League that, that we are uh, working on these days uh, using Docker. Okay, thank you, Gabriel. Uh, now, Vitor. Hello there. My name is Vitor Manuel. And today I'm going to show you how to connect your 3D robotic soccer team to the server, to the RC as a server, and how to use a nice tool that allows to do visual debugs. Thank you, Vitor. Jadson? Uh, my name is Jadson Nobre. I am a student University of Bahia. Uh, I am a super, uh, super she and, uh, and brothers. Okay, thank you, Jadson. Rafael? Hi, everyone. And my name is Rafael. And today we are going to teach uh, the basics, as Marcos said. And I hope you enjoy and learn. So we have a, a greater community and everyone can, uh, can learn more and improve our abilities. Okay, uh, we'll start with a, 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 a simple introduction where I will present some comments, uh, some concepts, basic concepts. Uh, if anyone has any doubts during the presentation, please post the doubts in the chat. Uh, we, uh, we will be very uh, uh, happy to answer all your questions and doubts during this tutorial session. We have enough time to answer all doubts so uh, feel free to to post your doubts in the the chat during the presentation uh i start talking uh with you about um the robocup soccer simulation 3d First of all, let's understand how robots are presented in the simulation 3D environment. The simulation 3D uses uh, humanoid robots based on the, a real robot that uh, are available in the, in the industry, that is the NOW robot uh, developed by the SoftBank Robotics. Uh, this is a real robot, but you have a, a simulated version of it in our uh, environment. And when it work with the, the now robot in the simulation, uh, for the teams, each robot is represented by a, an agent. So we are really talking about a multi-agent system where I have one agent for each robot. So you don't work with the, the uh, robots itself, 
but with agents that represent the robots. So we don't need to 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 manage uh, the hardware related issues. We don't need uh, even to have a hardware to work with this robot. We only work with the agent, uh, the, the software agent that controls the simulator, the robot. That's the, the, the main, main idea. Uh, we cannot do this kind of communication. So, uh, agents cannot communicate each other. The communic uh, the, each agent represents a robot and cannot communicate each other. So we cannot uh, exchange information between agents. We really have the, 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 the strict concept of uh, multi-agent systems where each agent are independent of each other. So we cannot uh, uh, communicate the agents uh, each other and uh, exchange the, the knowledge that each agent has acquired during the, his, his life. Uh, so the agents are modeled in the simulator. So the simulator represents all the robots and the agents communicate with the simulator to set to the simulator what are their actions and they receive from the simulation their perceptions. So in the in the main agent model, each agent receives perceptions from the environment. They decide what actions they should do, and they send to, to the simulator back the, the actions they want the robot to perform in the simulator. The simulator is responsible to uh, model and simulate the execution of these actions. Right? So they show the, the, the simulator show the shows the, 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 the robots performing the actions sent by the agents, and they capture the, the, the perceptions using the sensors that the simulated robots has, and send the perceptions back to the agents. Uh, each agent receives different perceptions depending on the position and the, the situation where the robot it controls are in, is in that, in that moment. So that they are not the same information that is sent for each agent. Uh, for this reason, the, the, the communication is not allowed because it not maps the, the a real multi-agent systems if you allow the communication. It is considered during a competition, uh, 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 we have a, a fair play rule that uh, uh, avoid teams to communicate the agents with each other, okay? Uh, you can decide if you want your team to be composed by homogeneous agents. Uh, that means uh, each agent has the same code, the same binary code, the same executable file, or you can also develop different agents, different binary files, different executable files. For example, you may be a agent three here, maybe a different binary, different file uh, than agents two and one. Uh, it's a, a decision of, of your team, how you can develop uh, your agents. Uh, however, most teams use the same agent and the difference between the, the roles of each robot in the, the field is done by the algorithm that they, they, they developed, that they implemented inside that their code. So it's not so usual, but uh, 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 it's not so usual to use different binaries, but it is allowed. It's not, it's no, that is no problem to do that. We have also 11 versus 11 agents. It's uh, the, the soccer simulation league in RoboCup is the, the, the they are the, 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 the unique competitions uh, that uh, runs so, uh, robotic soccer in our 11 versus 11 uh, match. Uh, all the other physical robot leagues uses uh, five versus five, six versus six, or less than these uh, in their fields. So uh, in this uh, picture, we show only three as, as an example, but each team is composed about by 11 agents. So when you are running uh, uh, two teams, you have 22 uh, independent agents. That means 22 uh, independent process running your operating system, your computer. For this reason, it's very uh, uh, heavy for a, a, a single computer, if it is not a, a very high performance computer to run, two teams and a simulator in only a single computer, as we see in the, the following uh, slides. So the soccer simulation 3D 
is a, a competition that uh, stays in the RoboCup contest uh, between the Soccer Simulation 2D, that is one of the first leagues in, in RoboCup, that there are more than 20 years of uh, research and uh, results generated by Soccer Simulation 2D in our community, and Humanoid and SPL, that is a uh, standard platform league, that are leagues that use the humanoid robots. SPL is a league that uses the now robot, the physical now robot, the same robot that we use here in the simulation 3D. And the humanoid league, the, the, it's a league where uh, teams are supposed to use humanoid robots, but the, the, the robots uh, is not a standard hardware platform. They can use uh, any robot they want that uh, meets the, the rules of the league. Uh, and uh, the, the main main uh, interest of the human audience SPL uh, are, are, are in the control of this robot. Most of them are, are trying to make the robot still uh, uh, stand up and, and walk with no, no falls and such kind of thing. So the control of the robots and the skills, low level skills, are the main interest in these leagues. They, uh, they try to start to use some uh, knowledge developed here in simulation 2D about multi-agent collaboration and cooperation, but uh, in, in many uh, situations, it's very hard to use this knowledge in the physical robots. The soccer simulation 3D is exactly the point where we try to use a robot that is a simulated robot, so, to, so it is uh, near the humanoid and the SPL hardware, that what we simulate here, and very different from the the simulated robots in the 2D league that is only points we have no no engines no no joints to, to, to control in the in the simulation 2D uh, in simulation 3D you have joints you have engines and we have all the the, the simulated hardware here uh, and this, in the same way you can uh, simulate a complete 11 team a team of 11 players where we can try to use the some of the strategies and high level uh, uh, coordination strategies developed by uh, soccer simulation 2D using the humanoid hardware in the simulation 3D. So the the simulation 3D is the bridge between all the, the, the knowledge that was produced by the 2D community in the later two, the, the last two decades uh, to the humanoid and the SPL uh, leagues and it's a, a very good uh, way to uh, foster the RoboCup main goal. Uh, as um, uh, some of you may know, the, the the goal, the main goal of RoboCup is by the middle of the 21st century, a team of fully autonomous humanoid robot soccer players shall win a soccer game, comply with the official rules of FIFA against the winner of the most recent RoboCup World Cup. So the soccer simulation 3D is one of the most interesting uh, initiatives that can foster and accelerate the, 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 this goal, because we can uh, use lots of uh, very interesting results that 2D soccer simulation has uh, generated in the last years and try to learn how we can use this in a humanoid robot. We can also create new models of robots that is not yet uh, implemented uh, in the physical leagues, and we check if these hardware models are uh, a good idea to be used, and if uh, we, we sh uh, should try to create uh, to develop these hardware uh, physically. So we can create new hardware models here and test these hardware models in the simulation for humanoid robots, and we can also uh, test and enhance the, the the, the strategy developed in 2D simulation. We have uh, a, an intersection both with 2D simulation and with physical leagues. For this reason, I think it's a very interesting league to, to, to take part because you can develop both uh, high level uh, research, like in coordination and multi agent systems and the other uh, uh, areas uh, of multi agent systems. And you can also develop research on control on the hardware development and the skills development and the other uh, low level uh, uh, skills in the in, uh, in the robot architecture. So that's a, a way that we can, in, in a single framework, develop a different kind of research and validate your research uh, in this 
uh, environment. So let's start talking about the, the simulation 3D environment. Our simulator uh, is called uh, is a, a joint of two software, the SimSpark and the RCSS server 3D. Uh, the SimSpark is a, a, a general simulator that uh, uh, uses a Spark framework to simulate the physics of robots and of an environment using the ODE engine, it's a physical uh, simulator engine. Uh, we have developed by the community during the, the years a, a multi-threaded version of the ODE that we use in the SimSpark. We see this in the installation step-by-step -step that we will show uh, in a few minutes. And we can, uh, and the SimSpark, you can use SimSpark to simulate any kind of robot or any kind of world, not only uh, soccer, uh, robotic soccer uh, uh, challenges. So it's a generic simulator for, for robots. Uh, the RCSS Server 3D is the soccer simulation uh, for the 3D league. And uh, at current state, we use humanoid robots in the now version of the, the, the simulated version of now sim, uh, robot that we use in, the, in this league. Uh, the, these two software components compose our simulator. The agents uh, connect to the uh, simulator using the uh, TCP sockets uh, connected to the RCSS server 3D. So they connect using the TCP sockets here. They use a default port that is uh, 3100. Uh, uh, and the, the server can receive uh, uh, 22 connections and uh, manage all these connections during uh, a match. So this is the, the overall uh, 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 architecture of the our server. Uh, so I have said, uh, already said that the uh, Asia connects using the TCP socket port uh, 3100. When an agent connects, open the socket, and after that, what an agent should do? He should send uh, a create effector that is a message like that, a command scene, and uh, a, a path in the server director where they will find the RSG file. The RSG file is the file that uh, uh, contains all details about the Barry model of the robot. So there you find all the details about the body of the robo, the joints, the engines, uh, and all the physical characteristics of the robo. So this, this file is, is where you can create, when you create new RSG files, you create new robots, new robo models uh, in the simulator. So when an agent connects, they must send what kind of robo he is. And uh, in, in this case of the now at RSG, that is the default uh, model that we use in the 3D competition, uh, we must uh, send a uh, second parameter that said what type of now what we are using. In this example, in the first command, command we have a uh, type 0. In the second example, we have a type 4. Uh, what are these types? Uh, we have, uh, in the last years, uh, created some variations of the now robot model. So we have some now that has uh, longer legs, other now that has uh, an, an extra uh, extra joint, for example, a tools joint to to move the tools tools of the in the in the extreme of the uh, foot. Uh, we also have uh, uh, some nows that have uh, faster uh, motors, faster engines, so you can uh, move faster than the, the our our the parts of the body than other nows, and you have different kinds, different types of models. All they are variations of the standard now. And uh, in the 3D competition, we the, the teams must use more than one type of robot. In a team, you, you must use at least three different types in your 11-player uh, team. We cannot use less than three types. We, you have, we, they have a maximum of seven robots of the same type. And we must have at least three different types present, types present in the team. 
So you cannot start a team and use all the robots in the say of the same type. The, the, the main impact of this is that uh, when you, you develop your skills, basic skills such as walking, running, kicking, sometimes the, the, the control that you use for one type of robot does not work or does not work with a good performance with the, another type. And you, you need to, to work with these heterogeneous kinds of robots. So you, you must have this in mind because during a competition, you cannot use all robots of the same type, okay? After a, a, a robot open a socket, send a create effector uh, like this scene, he needs to send an init effector. The init is a, a, a soccer effector where the robot identify his numbers, is the number of his t-shirt. So my number is one, I'm mean t-shirt number one, and his team name. Uh, so this is empty names by ERT. So in this case, uh, you the, the, the server, the simulator, you receive this command and you said, oh, this is the first robot of team by ERT. So he, he we understand that team by ERT is uh, going inside the field at that time, is is joining the field, uh, the, the, the game at that time. And he will, the server, the simulator, will wait other players from the same team to join the field up to complete the 11 uh, squads, okay? So that's the niche effect. After this, when this is completed, we say that the uh, the agent is completely connected to the uh, RoboCup soccer server, and he's, he's ready to, to start the game. Uh, because of the the, 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 the the management of the multi-threading inside the, 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 the simulator, uh, you cannot connect two agents at the same time. For example, a second agent can only start his connection when the last agent sent this init command. So if the, the uh, you try to, to connect and send a new scene command before the previous agent sent his init command and his connection is finished by the server, you have a, an error in the server and the team cannot uh, go in the, into the, the fields. So it's something that you may be aware about that. If you have questions, please put it in the chat. And Gabriel, please, if you see any questions here, let me know. Uh, continue with the basic concepts. Uh, the robot anatomy is made mainly by uh, hind joints like that. It's joined with a single uh, uh, a single axis uh, to move. You have a single degree of freedom here. Uh, and uh, uh, you have 24 uh, in the type 4 now that he has a, a extra tool in the in the foot on each foot we have 24 joints and in the other types type 0 1 2 and 3 we have uh, 22 hind joints this picture shows where the joints are, are, are positioned in the, the in the body of our robot uh, you see uh, in each leg, starting the hip up to the foot, you have six joints on each leg. So have six joints on this leg, on the left leg, and uh, six joints on the right leg. In the type four, you have an extra joint here in the end of each foot. That is the tools leg. Uh, you have four joints on each arm, uh, in the left arm, four joints, and in the right arm, four joints, and you have two joints in the head, uh, in the neck and the head here in these positions. Uh, and the way uh, the agent has to control these joints is using the high joint effector. The high joint effector is put uh, using the name of the joint. For example, here you have LAE3. This means uh, left arm effector tree. So he's talking about these joints. This is the LAA3. And they are sending uh, 5.3 uh, regions per second uh, velocity to these joints. So the, the, the joint will move at a constant velocity of uh, 5.3 regions per second. Uh, while the agents do not send another command to this joint, it, uh, the simulator will keep this joint moving with this velocity. 
up to its limit, or up to it receive another command from the agent, change the velocity or put in zero in the velocity to stop. Okay. So it's the way you control all the 22 or 24 joints in the in the robot. This is the main command your agent can send to the, the simulator, is the, the way you control the joints. Using these, you can do, you need to, to build uh, all movements. You don't have a walk command in the simulator. You have joints commands to each joint in the body. And you need to build your walking movement, your kicking movement, your grab movement, you don't have these commands ready in the simulator. So the, the simulator has received these commands. And if, to finish the effectors, you have three extra effectors, the bin effector, say effector, and synchronize effector. Uh, the bin effector, uh, it can be used only in some play modes. Uh, it's used like a teleport. You can uh, instantaneous move the, the robot and put it on a specific position. For example, when you are in the before kickoff play mode, uh, where the, the, the agent has already joined the server and the, the match is not, has not started yet, uh, instead of having each robot uh, needing to walk to a position and stay there to, to be ready to start the game, that will waste some time, it, uh, the robots can use, use the agents can use a bin command and to instantaneously uh, uh, transport uh, in a, the, the robot, bin the robot to that specific position. So the bin factor is, is made using a bin command uh, with an X, Y, uh, coordinate, right? it's a 2D coordinate in the field. And the, the last uh, parameter is the orientation, where the, the zero means uh, he's uh, if, if looking for in front of the, the positive uh, X axis direction, that is this direction. This is the positive X direction. And th this is the positive Y axis direction. Uh, the, the, the field is a, 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 a 30 by 20 meters field. field. Uh, the center of this coordinate system is in the center of the field. And so you have uh, from 0 to 15 here, and from 0 to 10 here, and here the negative counterpart. Uh, when the, this value is 0, the robot is uh, looking for this side, if this value is 90, it's in degrees, uh, they uh, would be looking to this point, to this direction. So this is 90 degree, here is zero degree for this coordinate, okay? Uh, you have the same factor, uh, although you, you agents cannot communicate each other uh, using sockets, using TCP or UDP sockets, as I said before, uh, the simulator allows uh, in the, the soccer uh, simulation that agents can uh, scream something like they can, like a, a player, a human player would scream something for their, their teammate during a, a, a soccer match. So for this, they use a, a, a say effector, that is say in the string. Uh, uh, it, it, these messages are not a a uh, point to point message, an agent to agent message is a broadcast. You, uh, you have two different channels, one for each team. You have uh, a channel, a communication broadcast channel for, for your team, and the broadcast communication channel for the opponent team. Uh, and everybody in the field receives this message. But it is it's the same shared channel. So if two agents of the same team uh, using the same factor at the same time, the, uh, the 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 players will receive the the first message that receive that that reach the server, uh, and you don't do not know what message will be that because you cannot have a, a synchronization of the agents. So uh, you must try to synchronize the use of your shared channel if you want to really to use uh, useful message in the safe factor. The safe factor also has some limits. The message must be limited to 20 bytes. So you cannot uh, take all your wood model, all the information your agent has or his coordinated plans for, for, for a new place and put in the message and send it because you have only 20 bytes to send it. 
Okay, so just some few methods can be used to 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 help in the coordination, uh, to help in the coordination of the the agents. Uh, one thing that we we'll see uh, in a, in a in a few minutes is that the, the vision perceptor is uh, a restricted vision perceptor. So the agents has a camera in their heads, but the camera has an angle uh, of uh, 120 degrees of uh, vision. So the agents has not, not uh, full vision, only directional vision. They have a, a partial vision. So it's, it's uh, usual that some agents are not seeing some important object, an opponent or any kind of thing that they are on their back, uh, behind the, the, the his, his body, and another teammate can say something about that for him, so that this way he, he can be aware that uh, an opponent is coming here for him, uh, behind him, certo? and may use this formation for some useful uh, behavior. Okay? Uh, Just completing the, this, this uh, image, you can see that there are some uh, fixed flags in the field. These are the, the, the unique fixed points in the field that are the F1L, F, F12, that is a, a flag one and flag two on the left side, and F1R and F2R that are the flag one and flag two uh, in the right side. This is like the, the corner flags in the, 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 the usual soccer game. And you have also have the G1R, G2R, and uh, G1L and G2L that are the, the, the goal posts, the goal posts left and the goal posts of the right goal. Okay? These are the unique fixed points in the field. The other fixed uh, things, objects in the field, are the lines, not the, the, the lines are also visible objects, but they are not points, they are lines, and they are also uh, percepted by the, 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 the agent's camera. And finally, the synchronize factor, it is using when you set up the server to run in the sync mode, sync mode true, as we see uh, in our demonstration. Uh, this is the official competition configuration, you, if you want to, to run Your, your game is using the same configuration that we, we, we use in competition. You must turn the sync mode true. And what is the sync mode? The sync mode, the simulator, waits all, all agents from both teams send their uh, a sync effect or a sync command say, saying that they have finished the send actions in that sequel, in that simulation sequel. And when all the agents send the sync command, the simulator process these commands, the, the simulations, and send back the, the perceptions, the sensors results for the agents. Uh, when you turn off the sync mode, you, uh, you run in the real-time mode. In the real-time mode, the simulator wait, waits 20 milliseconds, and then he finishes the simulation cycle and executes the commands. Uh, The, the, the official competition setup is using the sync mode, and we also use a client agent proxy that I will show you uh, later that to avoid some, uh, uh, some uh, strange uh, behaviors, like, for example, uh, the simulation freeze because one agent haven't sent a sync command. So if you use a client agent proxy, you avoid this kind of, of problem, and this is the, the complete setup of the competition include uh, the client agent proxy. So this is the complete uh, uh, effectors. This is the, the complete set of commands you can send. Uh, this is not updated because this is the main command that was designed in the, the first version of simulator. Uh, I will show you this website of the league uh, later, but we can see in the website the rules of each year of the competition. And in some years we Uh, added some extra commands. For example, in some recent years, uh, the, the technical committee added a pass command that uh, uh, allow a team to uh, have a one-time uh, uh, one time period of uh, with a, a one meter uh, one meter area with uh, opponents being avoided automatically by the simulator, so he can try to perform a kick and perform a pass. Uh, is a new command that was added in the recent years to foster the uh, passing 
doing the mats, not only dribbling. So that's the, 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 the main reason. During the years, uh, sometimes some commands are added or removed from the, the simulator. So it's very good to uh, follow the rules year by year and see what was being added or removed during the years. This is the basic command that was developed in the first version of the simulator. Certo? Here is an example of a message that we have captured, uh, a real message of an agent uh, sent by, by an agent to the server. So here you can see a bin, the same SQL, the agent asked to bin to that point, uh, minus 14.433, minus zero, the yx, and with the orientation zero grades. Uh, and here, the effectors, the head effector one, so he's moving with this speed, the head effector one. Here, he's moving with this speed, the head effector two. The left leg effector one is no, no moving, it's zero, the speed. The right leg effector one, no moving also. Left leg effector two is moving with a, a very low speed. The right leg effector two. There is no strict order to send these messages. The important is the name. The, the, you can send these effectors in any order. And the, the, the simulator, you, you, you can understand them by their names. The name of the effector is the important. So all, key, all, all these effectors is sent in here, is sent here are are uh, high joints effector all this and in the end we sent a sin the sync synchronization effector to tell the simulator that this is the finish of my effector messages in this cycle this simulation cycle okay now let's take a look in the perceptors uh the the first perceptor here is the zero rate perceptor. Uh, the zero rate uh, 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 is a, a, a sensor that uh, in the now uh, model that we use in the simulator 3D, he is attached to the torso of the robot in the upper uh, portion of the torso. Uh, and he uh, tell to the agent the uh, acceleration on, uh, in, on each uh axis the x y and z axis so uh, it's useful to you detect if the agent is stopped or walking or if it's falling no for example when the, an agent is falling the these values uh, uh will change a lot and you can detect this fall and try to uh, uh balance the the agent again before he he fall and avoid the, it to fall so it's very important to, to, to check the equilibrium, the, 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 the balance of the agent. Uh, the hind joint perceptor uh, is when you receive the feedback of your joints. Uh, here you have the HJ, that is the, 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 the tag that identifies the hind joint perceptor, and you have a name of the joint. Uh, the name used here are not the same names used in the effector, but are similar. Here is left. Uh, left arm joint. In the effector, you have a uh, left arm effector. It's an E uh, instead of J. Okay, so L-A-J means left arm joint three. Left arm joint three. So this example here is saying that the, this joint currently is with this angle in degrees. So this is the current angle of the joint in degrees. So you have the feedback of the current position of each joint. Okay. Uh, the fourth resistance perceptor is in, in the case of our now model, we have two of these perceptors, one on each foot, foot, and on the left foot, the other in the right foot. It is identified in the message you received from the server by the tag FRP. FRP, that is the force resistance perceptor, and you have a name that identify the part of the body that this perceptor is attached to. In this case, LF means left foot. You can also receive a RF, that is right foot. And uh, what is perceptor? Uh, what's the information you receive from this perceptor? Uh, he's 
tells the agent that some kind of force is being applied to that part of the the body. In this example, the left foot. Uh, the C with uh, uh, X Y Z coordinate uh, here uh, represents the point where the force is being applied in the foot. Uh, in fact, it's not the point where the force is being applied, but the average of all contact points that they are receiving force in that moment. For example, when a foot is in the in the in the in the floor, when you have one foot on the floor and the other, for example, you are performing a kick, the other are not in the floor. This foot that is in the floor, we receive many forces applied. Né? The normal force about the the uh, from the floor uh, being applied in he, in the foot, and the, the the this point C is the average of all points that uh, which are receiving force at that moment, and the F is the 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 intensity of these forces, the 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 the, the amount of force in the three G three, three dimensional uh, space. Okay, so he is the the, the the, the, the size of the force, né? the, the length of the force vector in the F, and the C is the average, po average point where the, the, the force is being applied. Okay? It's very useful also to when you are walking and you also uh, the, the, the walking movements and the kicking movements to you detect which are the foot that is on the, uh, uh, on the floor and the foot who is not uh, on the floor at that moment. It's very useful both for walking, running, and uh, uh, kicking movements uh, and the other situations. We have also the, an accelerometer. The accelerometer you have in the now model, only one attached also to the torso. Uh, and the, uh, the information is uh, sent by the accelerometer is uh, the acceleration of that part of the, 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 the body, the torso, uh, relative to a, a, a free fall of this, this part. For example, uh, in the in the z axis, it is put the gravity in the, uh, value here, nine point eight one. That is the approximate uh, gravity uh, uh, value. So it is uh, uh, the uh, how much it is accelerated when compared to the to a free fall. Set, okay. So this way, uh, you, you can also use the accelerometer uh, with the zero rate to detect falls. When you use both the, the, the zero rate and the accelerometer together, uh, you can provide a very good fall detection and you can avoid to, to fall many times. So it's a very uh, good way to keep uh, your robots stand up to be ready to play. The vision perceptor is one of the most important perceptors because it's the camera. As I said before, we have a, one camera put in a, uh, in the head of the robot. So the camera is not uh, in the, the floor, it's not in the foot, it's in the head. So you have the, the Z-axis uh, difference that, that uh, relative to the, the, the robot height to, 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 to be considered. Uh, when you see the angle of the camera, it has a, a maximum of uh, uh, 120 uh, range of vision. And when you receive a message like C, you say, say that uh, you know that everything that will be here after the C up to the last parenthesis that closes this one is the information sent by the camera. Here is not a complete C message. I have cut some parts just to show you the three types of information you can receive. You can receive information by a fixed point, like a ball, BB represents the ball, uh, and the, you have the uh, uh, co a polar coordinate here, where the first number represents the distance between the camera and the point. This distance, here is the camera, this would be the ball. So this distance in meters, okay? The second, coordinate is the uh, horizontal angle is this angle here. So here is the x axis. So is the 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 uh, 
the, this angle is the, the delta y in the y axis. And we have also in the z axis an angle that is the third one, is the delta z uh, relative to the camera, not to the ground. Okay? So the this is the 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 uh, the, the, the angle that uh, uh, indicated this uh, difference in the y, z. So this is the polar coordinate. You have also the uh, possibility to see a player. When you see a player, you receive a P, and he says, what is the teams of the player? It's like you recognize the teams of the player by their T-shirt pattern, for example. The number that is in the T-shirt, you, you can also see this number always. And also the camera uh, see each part of the of the, the body uh, individually. You don't receive a position of a player. You receive a position of each part of that player's body. Okay? So here you see the head of the player number one of team by RT is at this distance of me with these coordinates in the horizontal and the vertical uh, orientation. Uh, the right lower arm are at this position, the left lower arm at this position, the right foot at this position. So we have relative polar coordinates here for each part of the body of this player one of team by RT. This is the information you are seeing with your camera. In the, the left kind of information you can receive are lines. Lines, we, we, you receive lines as two points. One point is the, the first point of the line you are seeing. In, in, in practice, it's not a, 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 it's a, a, a line segment. You see a line segment where you see a start point and an, an end point. Like here is the distance for the start point and the angles, uh, horizontal and vertical angles and the distance to the end point with the angles also the original and the vertical angle so using these points you can uh, uh, realize the line that uh, is defined by these points so this is the three kinds of objects you can see a single object that is a ball that flags that i have shown in the in the in the field uh, a player from your team or from the other team, uh, the, the name of the team will be identified here, and uh, a line. You can see all the lines in the field, okay, if they are in the uh, range of vision of your camera. A game state perceptor that sends uh, information about the state of the game, the play mode, there are some, a set of play modes that is already known, uh, the time of the, the simulation, the time of the game, the score, and many other things. Uh, here, perceptor. I, I said about the say perceptor, where you can uh, screen something for someone, and the here perceptor that we used to uh, hear uh, uh, the the message. The, the first number say the the time, the 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 game time uh, when this message was sent, uh, and here is an angle that represents in the in degrees the orientation from where this message came. So you do, you do not identify who was the player who screamed that message for you, but you identify uh, from which direction this message came from. Uh, and here is a string with a maximum of uh, 20 byte, bytes. Uh, that uh, is the message itself. So you must manage to use uh, with a good encoding uh, strategy this 20 byte buffer so you can send more as more useful information as you can between players. Uh, and here you have a, a here perceptor uh, using in, instead of uh, the direction the self. When you receive this message with this set the self, you are here your own message, the message you have say, said some cycles ago. Uh, when a, a, an agent say a message, uh, it lasts uh, two cycles, two simulation cycles, about 40 milliseconds, to uh, the message uh, arrives in the in the in the the, 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 the situations, uh, in the all the agents that receive that broadcast. Uh, 
So you cannot send the same message each cycle, each simulation cycle, because if you do so, uh, you 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 will lose some messages because only the first message will be uh, broadcasted by the simulator. You must see, wait two cycles to send a second message. Not only one robot, but all robots. So you, you must create a strategy to uh, synchronize the use of your communication channel. Here is an example of a, a message received by an agent from the simulator. That is not a complete message, but a, an example. So we have some game state. Here is a simulation time since the simulation was started. This is the time now. And here the game stage perceptions with here is the game stage perception sent to uh, robot number one of team left. So this is the perception sent to this robot. They send the score is zero zero. The score left is zero. Score right is zero. The game time. The game is in time zero. The game has not started. The play mode before kickoff and ends. So at this time, this was the game stage perceptions they had to send. We have the uh, zero rate that is. Uh, the 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 the, the, the percept you have explained here here in the accelerometer you have explained the uh, high joint uh, perceptors for many joints here here you have the, a force resistance perceptor message look this is the way you receive it from your CP socket so you you need to have a parser to decode this message using the the uh, everything that I have said before okay. Uh, considering all these concepts, uh, a general uh, agent's architecture uh, would be designed like this one. It's not mandatory that you uh, design your agent this way, but this is a very common uh, general architecture for an agent. Uh, once you receive a message from server uh, using the TCP sockets, you must have a message parser to decode the message, as we have seen in the, the previous slide. And uh, uh, use this information to update your world model, your world state, your internal world state, or how the, the agent thinks the world is at that moment. Uh, you must have a kind of think engine, a reasoning engine, where you need to decide what do you do, what commands you send to the simulator so it can apply to the robots you are controlling. Uh, and once you decide what do you do, if you kick, you walk, you stay uh, where you are, or what do you do, uh, you must translate these high-level commands to uh, low-level uh, effectors, as we saw before. So you need to have a control strategy to, to generate speeds for each high joint here. And then you have a message composed that will build that message, as we saw before, and send it uh, using the socket to the simulator. This is the general architecture of uh, an agent in the 3D simulation. Uh, soccer simulation. Uh, we are almost finished the concepts. Another concept that I have mentioned before is the client agent prox. It was a contribution by Team Magma from Berg uh, to uh, avoid problems with uh, network latency and problems with agents that forget to send a sim uh, effector when you, you 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 are using the the sync mode. Uh, as we use in the official competitions. So the idea is that you can run a, a client proxy on the pro on, on each machine. Here is almost the, the same uh, environment you use during a competition. Here you have three computers, one computer running all agents from one team, a second computer running the simulator, or the Spark server, uh, and the RCSS server 3D, and a third computer running the 11 agents of a uh, 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 the second team. On each of the client machines, we run one instance of the uh, client agent proxy. What does this, this proxy do? This, it receives the message, so the agents does not connect direct to the server in the machine two. They connect in local host to the uh, proxy using the same port, uh, 3100. Uh, and the proxy has one, pre one thread for each agent and it sends the message that they sent for it to the server and receive the message from the server and uh, deliver it to the agent. What is the main point? Uh, if an agent uh, don't send a sync command 
in a, uh, at, at least at, 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 uh, up to 20 milliseconds, that is the time in the file to be one simulated simulation cycle. The proxy send a sync command here and uh, let the, the, the simulator to continue working. So the, the agent, in this case, the agent lose its opportunity to send a, a complete message and the, the proxy don't wait anymore and send a, 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 a sync command to the uh, simulator, uh, avoiding the simulator to freeze. And also, if you have a slow network here, problem with the network, so the, 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 the server can wait for the sync messages arriving from all the threads from the client agent proxies to continue the game. So you can run a, a, a fair simulation, even if you have a, a, a slow network here. So the, there are the, the, the two issues that the client agent proxy uh, solve, and uh, it's used as part of the official infrastructure during competitions. During official competitions, you always use an agent proxy. So if you want to test the, the, the environment in your lab using the same uh, setup as you use in the competition, you are I think we had a problem here. Looks like it disconnected for a second. Let me check. Let's give it a couple minutes uh, just to see if we can reconnect. I'm trying to talk here.
Okay, so it looks like he had a problem with his connection, uh, not able to communicate with him. So I'm gonna skip his part for now. Oh, he's he's. I think he's back. Just let me see. Okay, so he's he's coming back. He's returning. Just wait a couple of seconds. I have a problem with my connection, but I'm back. Here it is. I don't know where, when the connection uh, dropped, when I, where I was, but I, I, I finished the, the presentation. Uh, Gabriel, can you say me uh, when the connection dropped? You were talking about the, the proxy, Magma proxy. Mm, oh, okay. So I, I, I finished the, the, this part. Ah, it's always in the end. Okay. Here, here the, the, the magma proxy. Uh, okay, so continue. Uh, what is the magma proxy? I don't know if everybody has uh, uh, heard what I have said. Uh, uh, the, the, the magma proxy, the cloud agent proxy, the proxy developed by the magma framework team. Uh, it is used for two to solve two problems, two issues. One is related to when you have a slow network between the machine of the client machines and the server machine. Uh, so uh, it, it keeps a fair simulation because the server waits for uh, all proxies to, to send the sync commands for the server to continue the, the next simulation cycle. And the other point is when an agent don't send the sync factor, uh, the proxy send it, or if the agent is too slow and the, uh, uh, gets too much time to send the, 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 the sync effector, it uh, sends the the, uh, the 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 sync command instead of the agent to let the simulation continue. So this way you avoid these two problems. This is the uh, official setup we use uh, during competitions. So if you want to reproduce the same setup as we use in the competition in your lab, you need to use the client proxy. We will show how to install and use it. Uh, and in the last uh, uh, component for the official setup is the RoboVis. The RoboVis is the monitor that we use to watch the, the games, to watch the matches. So you can plug the, 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 the RoboVis in, in real time during a simulation and watch in real time what is happening during the simulation. Uh, if you do not connect the RoboVis to the simulator, the simulation you still uh running and you run the match you run the complete game you can set up the server to save a log and you can watch this match later using the robovis or other monitor there is a, a native uh, monitor in the syspark uh, uh, repository that is called rcss monitor but as robovis was launched with several uh, 
uh, uh, increase, uh, increase uh, enhancements, né? or several enhancements, and very, uh, very useful tools. Uh, it was uh, decided many years ago to use RoboVis as our official monitor instead of the native monitor from CISPARC. But is also, there is also this another option. We do not, we will not show here in this tutorial the, the, the native monitor because the official one in the, the league is the RoboVis and the, is the one that we recommend you to use. The RoboVis connect to the server using a TCP socket uh, in, at port uh, 3200. Uh, and uh, uh, we can also use a trainer to connect in this port to the server. What is a trainer? A trainer is a program that you can use to send some commands to the RoboVis or to the server, like change the play mode, uh, start or stop a match, and other such kind of, of uh, commands. Uh, you can bin players using the trainer, uh, even in, in, in other uh, play modes where the, the the, the player, the agent cannot be in itself. It is very useful to you to, you to prepare uh, specific situations where you want to train train your 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 agents. For example, if you are developing if you are developing a, a, a kicking skill, if you are developing a kicking skill, you you must position the ball, position your player, and must uh, and let it. Uh, uh, run and kick, and then you want to position again and let it run and kick and repeat these many times. A trainer can make all this positioning for you and make it uh, repeat this, this same situation many times so you can feed your machine learning uh, engine with the, the, the feedback you need to using our reinforcement learning, for example, like strategy uh, to learn a, a better skill, a better kick, or to, to run an optimization algorithm to optimize your your kick or any other uh, kind of situation. So the same port used to to the RoboVis or the monitor, you can use it to also to plug in a trainer. The last feature I will show you is uh, a feature that is uh, 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 presented by RoboVis, that is uh, the RV Draw. RV Draw is a feature from RoboVis that allows you uh, plot some uh, images some draws in the in the screen uh, during the the game, so you can make your agents uh, connect direct to RoboVis using this port three two seven six nine, and when you connect, you can uh, you can um, uh, send some some commands to RoboVis to uh, draw some circles, points, or any any other kind of forms. We will show this for you later. And you can see that this is a, a, a very good tool, a, a very powerful tool to debug your agents. For example, you don't know why your agent is, is behaving that way. It's not what you you have programmed, but he's, he's doing something different from what you want. So what you can do? You can just only uh, uh, make the agent plot the target, where, why he is going to that point. What uh, you might make you can make the age printing over his head. What is the method, the fun function he's uh, performing at that moment? So you say, oh, why he's executing this now? You can uh, plot some some values of variables in that during the, the the game, so you can have information and conditions to debug your agents better and fix your bugs and your your misbehavior. Uh, during the, your development process. It's a very powerful tool. Of course, the average door is not allowed during competitions. It's a tool uh, used for only for debugging, only to be used during development, not to be used during competitions, okay? But we will show it to you also. Okay. This way, I, I finished the, the, the introduction. It was uh, longer than, than what I was imagining that was posed uh, but uh, let's uh, uh, start now uh, the second part of this tutorial uh, in the second part we show you how you can set up all these environments okay so you 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 use it to 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 we will show you how you can download where you can download from uh, each part of this boxes in the architecture we have shown here and how step by step you can set up all of these uh, elements and at the end of this tutorial 
you must know how you can uh, uh, set up your own environment to run a complete uh, 3D simulation uh, game, okay? Uh, we have uh, recorded some videos with this information, so uh, I will uh, I will run the first video, so several short videos, so we run the step by step, and after that, you, you can ask some questions, and we are here to answer you. So if you have questions, if you, you can ask, ask questions in English or in Portuguese, we can understand both. So uh, we can answer both questions in English or in Portuguese. Uh, we, I will show the first video, and then uh, if you have any questions, we can answer you. The first video will show you how you set up the server. How can I you, you install the server? Uh, let me load the video here. My name is Rafael, and today I'm going to teach you how to install the RCSS server and how to set up a client machine to connect to it. First, we need to go to the RoboCup website, go into 3D Soccer Simulation and Tools and Support, and now we can click on the installation instructions of the RCSS server 3D and SimSpark. Now we are on GitHub, and at first we can do an update in our system. <clears throat> and after that, we can run this command. command. <clears throat> and install multi-threaded ODE. We need that to help with the simulation of the 3D bodies, uh, which are the robots, and to help with the multi-threading, and to help the performance of the server. And we can just uh, copy and paste this command in our terminal. We don't need to do anything uh, besides what is said here on the tutorial. Just need to clone the repository and install some things. And now, uh, after we run ran autogen.sh, we can just copy and paste the configure. Run make the J8 is important to use uh, more than one processor, uh, actually, eight to make the making process faster.
we can install okay now to install the simulator and just clone in spark go to the directory and make here good or you can just copy and paste this command in make And to install uh, the server and the libraries you need, it is important for you to have a Ubuntu.18.04 and in the cleanest way possi uh, possible. And if you have a fresh, freshly installed, it is better. So the chances of uh, getting any errors is. Uh, Reduced. Okay, and after printed, we can do do make install. Three D and press enter. Now it's working. So, hope you enjoyed. And if you have any doubt, please comment below. Okay. Uh, let's just answer some questions here. Uh, Demis asked us uh, what the PC configuration for on the server. Uh, the, the server is a very CPU bound. Uh, application because of the physics processing uh, th that's the main main issue about the server in, in the competitions we generally ask uh, uh, for the organization of the events to to provide us with i7 computers with uh, 16 gigabytes memory but uh, it's not always possible uh, in fact it, uh, you can use the, the better CPU you have, an i5 CPU or similar uh, should be enough uh, with at least 80 gigabytes of RAM. I think it would be uh, a minimal configuration that you can use to run the server if you run only the server on that computer. If you want to run the server and the clients and the, the complete stuff, it, it will be very, very, it will run, but it will run very, 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 very slow. But very slow, slow, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> uh, uh, the Linux version, it was already answered here. Uh, the, 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 in, in practice, the, the, if you read the, the SysPark documentation, it can be compiled in, even in Windows. But uh, when you, uh, people, some people have tried to compile it in Windows and has lots of problems. We also can compile it in other uh, Linux distributions. You can use it. Uh, for example, some people in, in, in Germany, I know they use uh, 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 CentOS, I think, uh, and there are people that use uh, Fedora, uh, other versions of Linux, like uh, uh, 16.04. Uh, we started to use in this version of Linux uh, two years ago. Before that, we have used in the official competition 16.04, uh, but uh, uh, 
uh, we recommend this version because this is the version where the uh, technical committee of the league tests the complete environment is, and is the official version used in the official competitions. Uh, only for this, we recommend this version. We will see tomorrow in our next tutorial how you can use the, the, uh, 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 the, the complete setup using only one computer and uh, independent of this operating system. So, uh, we will see how you can do this tomorrow in our uh, tutorial about using containers. Uh, but uh, if you want to install everything in a native computer, the recommended version is the official version used in the competition, that is the Linux 18.04. But we can try to install it on other versions if it is difficult for you to change your operating system. Uh, Romero has asked us in Portuguese if we need to uh use three computers uh physical or virtual machines uh to set up the complete environment uh, uh the, the three computers uh it's what you gives you uh, uh an acceptable performance because you have too much processes only one team has uh 11 processes a second team more 11 processes And you have the simulator that is a, a very high CPU bound uh, uh, application because it has to simulate the physics of 22 robots. So although the, 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 the physics simulation of SensePark is not, is not the, the most realistic one, but we have lots of, of issues to be simulated. For example, when a, a robot collides a, a leg with its own leg, it's, lots of, of, of calculus that must be made by the ODE to, to simulate what will help in that case. And when lots of robots go towards the ball and they begin to collide each other many times, you, the simulator works a lot in these situations. So we, we have a, a, a very uh, uh, CPU bound application here uh, and with a lot of processes. If you try to run everything in one computer as i said before it will run but it will run very slowly we have found a way to do that using containers and we'll show it in the tutorial session two that we will run tomorrow it's uh, for 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 people who do, does not have uh, three or four computers to run everything is a good idea to watch the, the, the our next tutorial tomorrow and see how you can do this in one computer. It was very useful for us uh, during this pandemic because uh, as our students are working at home, uh, they don't have a, a network with four three or four computers on each home. So uh, the, the, the idea of using Docker was very useful for us for, us, for this way. And this, we have found another application for this that is using it to run uh, the complete environment in, in a supercomputer that our lab has access to run uh, machine learning uh, experiments. Uh, we have an error here. Let me... This is a very known error. I don't know if Rafael or Gabriel is more use it to this error, can you explain? Okay, so you have to, to link the libraries uh, to, the, to the server in the LD library path. Uh, the command is available already into the, if you download, if you clone the repository of the soccer server of the SimSpark, you have a build.sh file there. Uh, one of the last lines, I believe it's the, it's one above the last line, uh, it's the command to link the libraries. So just use a text editor to, to copy that, that line and put it on the, on your terminal and it should be good to go. It's something like, uh, uh, echo, uh, echo, uh, export uh, ld library path uh, equals to the the path where this library 
live oxygen is, is in the in the server installation is only that problem the, the, the it's not find the this library exactly uh, uh, sometimes when you, you you follow exactly the the, the the most times when you follow exactly the, the procedure that the uh, rafael showed us this problem does not happen but we do don't not we do not know why sometimes these problems uh arises when you even if you follow the the the, the correct procedure and uh, also if you are running a clean machine and uh, these chances of this kind of error happening are uh, reduced yes sometimes the the, the already existing environment uh, has some other uh, past configuration and when, when you, uh, you install the, the server it does not put the the the, the path for, to the libraries in the, the correct uh, uh, environment variable and this kind of problem may, may happen. When you have a clean computer, it's very uh, easier to, to follow the procedures you have just showed and, uh, and, and everything you, you works fine. Okay, if you have any other questions, please continue uh, posting each on the chat. I will now uh, show you uh, how you can uh, prepare uh, the, a client computer. A client computer is easier to prepare. You, you only need to prepare the client proxy and such kind of thing. But uh, generally, you have no problems. I am Vitor Manuel, and now we're going to see how to connect a team to the RCSS Service 3D. And we're going to see more about the client machine and the agent proxy. Okay then, before starting the installation process, uh, be sure your machine has Java. So to check it, you can run this code. And, uh, as you can see, I have the uh, SD key and JRE installed on my computer and I recommend you install the version 1.8 uh, 1.8 because it will be needed for the Hobovis Monero and Hobovis Monero is a, a tool that will be shown uh, later in this presentation. Uh, anyway, the proxy requires the 1.7 uh, version or, or uh, superior version. As far so good, now we're gonna open the proxy web page. So let me open it to my computer and show us the link as text. So the proxy was created by the Magma Offenberg team, and to download it, we just need open the release space and download the zip file. Now I am open the directory and unzip the proxy folder. Then I am add execution permissions to the initialize a script. So is it, we finished the installation. Well, it's pretty easy to connect a team to the server using the Magma proxy. You just need to pay attention to some server and team initialize script configurations. So make sure that the sync emoji option is true in the server and verify what is the server host IP and the server agent port. Okay, let's go to run the Magma proxy. To execute that, I need to 
run the initialize script and inform three values. The first one is the server host IP, and in my case, I'm gonna run the server in the same machine that I'm gonna run the proxy and the team. But if you are running the server in another machine, in another computer, you need to inform this uh, it IP, the computer IP. So you need to type something like here is the server host IP, and after that you need to put the server agent port that is 3100 by default. And finally, finally you need to put the proxy port that will be used by the team's agent to connect them to the proxy and to the server. So, oh, sorry, 3100. Okay, but in my case, I I gonna run the server in the same machine that I gonna run the proxy and the team. So the server IP is localhost, the server agent port is 3100, and the proxy server port is, I don't know, 3500, for example. So let me to run the server. Okay, and now run the magma proxy. Okay, it's running. Uh, now we're gonna to execute a team and connect it to the server using the magma proxy. So I'm gonna run the buyer RG. So I need to execute the initialize script and these need the proxy information instead uh, the server information instead of the server information so i need to put the proxy ip that is localhost in my case uh, and after we need to put the proxy port that is 3500 and now by IRG, RG is already connected to the server through the magma proxy. So they are the the by RG are sending messages to the proxy. And okay. But you don't need to use the proxy when you are running everything on the same computer like like me so you, you just need to connect the chain to the server directly but you can use it th this way if you want to reproduce the competition the, competi the competition environment uh, on just on computer okay then uh, to finish this part i want to tell us some tips about the team source and the the team's machine the client machine so firstly why you can have a client machine where you put all source and libs needed to developing and debugging your robot team in a competition you must use a clean binary of your team so keep the developing version uh, in your machine but send a uh, binary version to competitions. Secondly, about team binary, uh, it's a nice practice to build it, the, the binary version, uh, with all libs needed for the team. It not depend on the competition machine's configuration. By doing that, you will assure that your team will work correctly in competitions. Okay. Let me see. Huh? Okay. Uh, this was the the client installation and the client proxy. You see that the client, of course, is your agents, is your teams. Uh, so uh, your your is your team. 
So you, of course, you need to move your 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 code to the computer and set up all the stuff your code required to run the the, the complete environment. Vitor, I think you have some fans watching the 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 this tutorial. Uh, uh, and uh, completing the, the, the explanation, the Vitro shows you how you can set up the, the agent proxy. The agent proxy is a, 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 a tool that I have explained before that you use to, uh, uh, to connect the agents to the server when the server are running in another computer. It is used to reduce the impact of the network latency if you have a slow network or such kind of thing. And also to avoid problems when agents do not send the sync com com uh, effector as I have explained before. Uh, so uh, even if you are running everything on the same computer, if you want to avoid the, the second issue that is agents don't send in the sync commands, uh, you can use the proxy. Uh, locally, uh, but uh, if you are sure your agent does not have this problem, you can run the the, the agents and connect to the server uh, locally in the same computer. You have the problems with performance, as I have explained before. Uh, Vitor also explained in the, in the end of the, the this video that uh, it's very important to to you uh, when you go to a competition to. Uh, uh, assure that your uh, uh, binary, your your executable files of your agent, uh, contains all the libraries you need uh, linked in this library, or at least you must move the, the the dynamic library binary to the your binary folder and expose the LD library path uh, to this uh, uh, folder, so you can. Uh, assure your binary you run on any client computer because in the competitions uh, the organization are used to uh, do a very thin setup they only start install uh, the, the basics that uh, 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 Ubuntu installation need so if you use some special library for example some teams use tensorflow or another kind of library you need to link it with your binary or put it in your binary folder and use your start script to export the, the, the path for this library uh, to the environment variable so you can run your binary in any computer machine because uh, if you cannot run it on the competition machine, your team will, will, will not, uh, you cannot, cannot run and will be disqualified for the competition, okay? So it's a, a tip that Victor added. If you have any questions, please put in the chat. Vitor, do you want to, to make any additional commentary? No. Okay, thank you, Vitor. Now you continue uh, showing uh, the RoboVis, that is the, the monitor, as, as I have said in the, the, the previous presentation. And let's see how can we install and run the RoboVis. My name is Rafael. And today I'm going to teach you how to install and set up RoboVis Monitor. Uh, this monitor is used to see the simulation uh, running. And at first we need to go to the RoboCup website, go into 3D Soccer Simulation and Tools and Support. Here we can see the installation instructions of the server, proxy and RoboVis. We are going to click in this link and go to the GitHub homepage and now you can see uh, the source code and also the installation instructions. To run and build RoboVis we need Java 1.h and I'm not going to cover the installation process neither the building process um, because you, we are going to download the binaries and you can click here and download this file I already have it so I'm just going to extract it and 
Now I'm gonna cover uh, some topics about the config.sh, config.txt, and robovis.sh. You can uh, change the settings by uh, change the config.txt file. the graphic settings, uh, visibility, networking and you can also change it by running config.sh which changed the same uh, txt file but now using the graphical interface now uh, to connect to the, to the server we can type localhost if the server is running the same machine as the RoboVis monitor and if you are running the server in another machine you can type the IP address here the port um, is 3200 by default uh, which connects the monitor to the server and you you need to change it uh, only if you change the this port on the server configuration if you don't change anything in the server you don't need to change it here and now uh, you can save it and start the monitor and you can see that it, it's trying to connect to a local host uh, 3200 you can also start the monitor by typing robovis.sh and it shows the same screen now I'm going to start the server and it's connected now I'm gonna run the teams And you can see the agents here. Now the other one. And if you press K, the game begins. Another thing you can do is to save records of your matches and then use it to replay after. So to do this you need to open the config.txt file and go to record files, log files and change from false to true and then uh, here you can write the directory you want to save the records and save and after that you can close and start the match now I'm going to start the monitor in the server and the two teams After that you can just start the match and see the game if you want and after the game finishes you can close everything and then you can just start the monitor again but write dash dash and log mode in here you can click to open the log file And 
now you can see the agents and entering in the simulation and we don't need the server anymore neither the two teams it's just a record so you can just rewatch and use it to debug or anything you need so it's this for today and if you have any doubt you you can comment below so see you later Okay, uh, this is the, the RoboV installation. The, the setup is very uh, easy, as you have seen. Uh, there is no no more problem. You only must be uh, careful with the... Uh, you must only be careful with the version of Java. And uh, uh, if you install everything in the, the way Rafael has just showed you, you can use the, the RoboVis in a, in, a, in a clean way. Uh, one important thing is that uh, uh, the, you can, he showed you how you can set up the RoboVis to uh, save logs during a real match. It's one option. But another option is to set up the server to, to save logs. During the competitions, generally, you do that. Uh, I, I think that uh, Gabriel has make uh, make this uh, before, but I, I, uh, there is a, a, a file that is uh, I'm not uh, sure now if it's the Spark.rb or the now soccer scene.rb. One of these two files, it, there is an option that you change from false to true to write log files, and if you do that, the the uh, the server will you write a log file after the match, and you can also load this log file using RoboVis in the same way as Rafael has already showed. Okay? Uh, before we, we we go to the last part, that is the RV draw, uh, I will show you uh, the, the 3D repository where you can find... Um, Here. Here is the 3D, uh, three, not the 3, but the Soccer Simulation League uh, page. Uh, you have saw it in some of the videos you have already shown. Uh, here in Tools and Support, you can see some important links. Uh, most of what we are showing here I on this guide. This is the organizing committee guide where they show how you can set up a complete uh, competition environment. Uh, here in this archive is where you find, for example, the certificate is not updated, but here is the where you can find uh, uh, logs from previous comp official competitions, uh, binaries of teams, and everything. For example, if you go in, in logs, you have logs from uh, Brazil Open, German Open, Iron Open. Offenburg tournament was an, an official tournament that was held last year when we have the Robo Cup. And the Robo Cup Worldwide comp uh, Championship here, uh, Portuguese Open, etc. If you enter here, sorry, you have uh, many years of RoboCup logs from 2008 to 2019. Uh, 2020, we have no official RoboCup competitions. If you enter here, we see all matches from any uh, uh, round of the, the competition. For example, round one, we have each file is a log of one half time. For example, here we have FC Portugal versus Right Ocean is the uh, one half time, and here uh, Right Ocean versus FC Portugal is the second half of the, the the match. So each two files represents one match. So you can download these files in the format uh, tar bz2, and you can use that log mode that Rafael has already shown you to open this file in this format. You 
uh, do not need to extract this file. You can open the file in this mode and it will run the log and you can watch this match. So you have lots of logs here. These logs can be used also to, to be used uh, in, in research. So you can uh, collect some statistics about matches and such kind of thing. Uh, you can also find here binaries. Binaries are executable files of teams in the competitions where the, the binaries are released. So in RoboCup, it's always uh, mandatory to release the, the binaries. So if you go here, you can see uh, the binaries. You can download these files and then when you extract, you have the binaries with a script to start. You can run these things. If you, for example, uh, set up a complete environment using the structures we are showing you here, and you download any of these binaries, you can run these teams. Of course, you must uh, check what are the requirements for each team. For example, Magma from Berg needs Java in the client computer. Some teams are here, but, but uh, require some kind of library that they, they, they have not set up uh, properly in their uh, start script. But most of the, the binaries run as they are. You can only need to download and run. So if you set up the environment and download some of the binaries, you can uh, you can uh, you can run a match between these teams in your computers in your uh, lab uh, today. So you have binaries that work. Right? These are 2020 binaries from Brazil Open, uh, and we have also if you can only watch these matches, all the matches of recent competitions that are here in logs you can also see here in replays uh for example you can see here uh final match in replays you can see online what is happening uh, you can use the same uh, keyboard controls that you use to adjust camera in, in RoboVis. You can see matches here online. So you can watch matches of official competitions online. It's a, a match that was bugged, it's not running. Or it's running. Uh, it's a penalty, a penalty shoot. A penalty shoot is a one versus one match that the the, the attacker has uh, only 40 seconds to score. And the goalie cannot uh, go outside of the goal area. That's uh, the main rules of the penalty. So it was a goal. Uh, just to see. Okay, uh, Rafael, uh, do you want to to add some uh, further information? No, it's a very straightforward uh, step by step. You know, in, we don't need anything. And if you have any doubt, just comment, and we will try to answer. Okay. Uh, we are, we are uh, almost reaching our limit time. We, we have uh, scheduled this tutorial session one for two hours. Uh, we, we would show today the RV draw, but I think as we have another tutorial session tomorrow, and tomorrow we have less content about the Docker, uh, I propose to show the RV draw part tomorrow in the beginning of the the the, the tutorial session and after that we show the docker part with the containers i think it would be good uh, for what we have shown today is enough if, if you can to uh, go out now and start to set up the environment you can the the, the video you will, will keep available here is still available here you keep the video available here in the channel you can watch again as many times as you want and stop and pause and see the, the step by step and you can set up your environment right now, download some of that binaries and run a match and see everything running in your computers at this moment. 
If you do this on in a single computer, you will see that it would run, but it would be very uh, slow. And tomorrow, we will show you how can you do this and uh, run uh, very faster in a single computer. And this is a very uh, uh, good tip, so you can uh, uh, work during the, the pandemic at home in a very good fashion. Okay, if anyone has any additional question, please, we are available. If you know, we will finish this tutorial session for today. And tomorrow, in the same time, we'll be here to show you the RV draw that we, we, we haven't shown today. And this complete setup on a single computer using container and also how you can prepare a complete container to run a, a, a simulator in a high performance computer, like a supercomputer or such kind of thing. Uh, all the, these, these demonstrations that will be, will show tomorrow uh, are very uh, useful for researchers, for people who are working with machine learning. In our lab, you are developing lots of uh, experiments using uh, deep reinforcement learning. Uh, we are uh, preparing some containers to use with the OpenAI gene and other uh, very uh, state-of-the-art uh, solutions that are very, very useful for people who work in the 3D simulation as a, a test bed for your scientific research. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your presence here, for your questions. Hope to see everybody tomorrow invite other people to join us tomorrow and uh, tomorrow i will present also the the remaining schedule for the other tutorials the tutorial sessions will be finished in the weekend with a magma fenberg session showing their own source code that is already available uh, on saturday and on sunday you have the ut austin villa team showing their source code that is already available uh, they are both good bases to start a new team. So if you get the, the, the knowledge we are presenting for you today and tomorrow, with the knowledge that you see in the weekend, we have all you need to start a new team in less than one month. And if you want, you can participate in the RoboCup Worldwide competition this year in June because the call for participation deadline is May. Uh, so you have time to take part of the competition. And this year is a very uh, great opportunity to join the RoboCup competition because this is a virtual competition. We have no trip costs. And also you have the lowest uh, registration fees in the history of RoboCup. So it's a unique opportunity to join the 3D Simulation League using all the information in these tutorials and also uh, using the extended deadline to join the, the competition in, and, and participate with us in June. Hope to see every you there. Bye. See you tomorrow.